What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renat and in this video we're going to be taking a look at AI powered text generation using a GPT-3 clone called GPT-Neo in just four lines of code. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So first up, what is GPT-3? Well, GPT-3 is a deep learning powered language model trained on 175 billion parameters by OpenAI. Now this means that it would take a huge amount of time to train something as sophisticated as this on a consumer GPU. The amazing thing about this particular model is that it's really, really flexible and performs really, really well on a range of natural language tasks, specifically like text generation, Q&A, sentiment and classification. Now, the unfortunate thing about GPT-3 is that it is only available through a closed beta. The great thing, however, is that you're able to leverage a GPT-3 clone called GPT-Neo. Now, the model that we're going to be taking a look in this particular video is trained on 2.7 billion parameters. So it's not exactly the 175 billion parameter model that OpenAI built, but it is really, really sophisticated. And you'll see that a little bit later. So let's take a look as to what we'll actually be going through. So first up, what we're going to be doing is installing GPT-Neo. So GPT-Neo is going to give us a GPT-3 clone, which is trained on 2.7 billion parameters and can definitely be fine tuned. So if you'd like to see a video on fine tuning this, by all means, do let me know. So once we've installed it, we're going to be able to generate text in just four lines of code. So it's really, really straightforward. And what we'll also do is we'll save that output to disk so you can pick it up as a text file and leverage it later on. Now you're probably thinking, how is this all going to work? Well, let's take a look. So first up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leveraging the Hugging Face Transformers library to load our pre-trained GPT Neo model. Then we'll pass through a text prompt. So say, for example, we might ask, what is the meeting to life? Import pandas as PD if we wanted to generate Python code. We could even generate some SQL statements as well. And then once we've generated that text or once our model's generated that text, we'll then be able to output that result to a text file using a standard Python with statement. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so in order to get started with GPT Neo, there's going to be four things that we need to do. Now we're going to keep this tutorial relatively short and sharp. We're just going to power through it and ideally, by the end of this, you should be able to get up to speed with GPT-Neo and start generating some of your own text. So the four things that we need to do are install and import our dependencies, set up our pipeline or our generator, then pass through some text and generate text using a prompt. And then what we're going to do is output that text and save it to a file. So first things first, let's go on ahead and install and import our dependencies. Now, the first dependency that you're going to need is PyTorch. So the easiest way to install this is if you just go over to the PyTorch website, so pytorch.org. And again, all the code for this, as well as links to relevant documentation will be in the description below. So you can pick this up and run with it. So what we're going to go on ahead and do is go to the PyTorch website. And then towards the bottom, you're going to see this section called install PyTorch. Now, all we need to do here is choose the build that we want. So we're going to choose stable in this case, choose your operating system. In this case, I'm on a Windows machine. So I'll choose Windows, choose what package you want to install. So I'm going to use pip, but you could use Conda as well if you wanted to. In this case, we're going to be working with Python. So we're going to choose Python. We're leveraging GPU acceleration using CUDA 11.1. .1. Now GPU acceleration really isn't gonna kick in unless you've got a massive GPU that's able to handle this particular model, but that's fine. We'll install it using CUDA 11.1 .1 anyway. So once we've got that, you're sort of going to get this command down the bottom here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my notebook. Now, in order to run a command line within your notebook, you just need to include an exclamation mark. And I'm just going to remove the three from the pip command because I'm just using standard pip. And then all we need to do is just run this cell. So that's going to go on ahead and install PyTorch. Now I've already got it installed, so it went relatively quickly. So that's our first install done. So installing PyTorch. Remember, all you need to do is go to pytorch.org, select your different options and copy that command, run it in a cell. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually install Transformers. So Transformers is a really powerful and probably one of my favorite natural language processing libraries. And the beautiful thing about Transformers is that you get a bunch of these pipelines. So you get a conversational pipeline, feature extraction pipeline, text generation pipeline, a translation pipeline, a whole bunch of pipelines that allow you to leverage really, really sophisticated NLP models relatively easily. So we're gonna be using Transformers exactly for that. So let's go on ahead and install Transformers. So this one's relatively straightforward. 
So in order to install transformers, all we've gone and done is run exclamation mark pip install transformers. And that's going to go on ahead and install all of this good stuff here for us. So those are our two dependencies now installed. Now all we need to do is import our main dependency, which is going to be transformers. So let's do it. Okay, so that is our transformers library now imported. So in order to do that, I've written from transformers import pipeline. So this is our first line of code, so first line. Now, this pipeline over here is effectively going to be giving us all of these pipelines available. Now we're going to be using the text generation pipeline. So in a second, you'll see that we pass through the text generation argument to that particular pipeline to be able to leverage our text generation using GPT Neo. But again, if you want to deeper dive into this, by all means, do let me know in the comments below. I was thinking a mega tutorial might be useful for GPT, might also be useful for transformers, particularly transformers, because there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now, in this case, that's our pipeline now imported. Now what we need to do is set up our generator. So we're going to write our second line of code. Alrighty, that's our second line of code now done and dusted. So this line of code here is actually going on ahead and loading up our GPT Neo model, which is going to give us our GPT-3 clone. So in this case, what we've written is generator equals pipeline. And then to that pipeline, we've passed what type of pipeline we want. In this case, we're going to be leveraging the text generation pipeline. So to do that, we've written inside of a string text dash generation. And then I've passed through a comma, and then I'll pass through a keyword parameter. So this next keyword parameter is what defines what type of natural language model or what type of language model you're going to be loading into that pipeline. Now, in this particular case, we're going to be leveraging the GPT Neo model with 2.7 billion parameters. So to do that, we've written Eleutha AI forward slash GPT dash Neo dash 2.7 B. So this means that we're going to be leveraging the Eleutha AI, which are the guys that have actually gone and built the GPT Neo model. And then by passing through slash GPT dash Neo dash 2.7 B, we're importing the 2.7 billion parameter model. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, it's actually going to download the model. So I believe it is about 10 gigabytes. So it might take a little bit of time to download, but it will do everything that you need to do for you. So you don't actually need to go and do anything else. It'll just download it for you onto disk so you're able to leverage it. There is also a 1.3 billion parameter model. So if your computer's running a little bit slow and you want it to run a smaller model, you can do that. So let's let that go on ahead and load and then we'll be able to run our model. Okay, so that is our generator now loaded. So you can see here that that particular cell is run. So we no longer have a little asterisk in there. So we're now able to run it within our notebook. The next thing that we're actually going to go on ahead and do, and so this is our second line of code, second line. Next thing that we're going to go on ahead and do is start generating some text using a prompt. Now this prompt could really be whatever you wanted to. So if you wanted to write a love story, write a poem, um, get some answers to what is the meaning of life, this is where you could pass it through. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do is let's start off with that. So we'll type in what is the meaning of life and what will actually happen. So let's just make sure this is prompt. So what will actually happen is when we pass this prompt to our GPT Neo model, it's actually going to try to generate text using that prompt. So you'll actually see that it's trying to answer that, maybe write a bit of a blog post, and you'll actually get some answers generated using the GPT model, which I think is absolutely fascinating. But anyway, let's actually go on ahead and do it. So what I've done is I've created a new variable called prompt, so P-R-O-M-P-T, and then I've just set that equal to a string. And you'll see in a second, we'll change the string, we'll try generating some other styles of text, maybe some code as well. Then what we need to do is actually pass that prompt to our generator to be able to actually generate code. So let's do that. Alrighty, before we go on ahead and run that next line of code, let's take a look at what we actually wrote. Let's actually include some additional cells so we can see this. So this is our third line of code up here. This is our fourth line. So after this, we'll actually have our generated text, a so fourth line. Now, in this particular case, what I've gone and done is created a new variable called res for results. And then I've set that equal to our generator. So in this case, you can see that we set up our generator here. What we're doing now is passing some arguments and keyword arguments to that particular generator to generate text. 
So here, what we've gone and written is generator. And then to that, we've passed through our prompt, which is this string over here. Then we've just gone and set some keyword arguments. So you can play around with these if you wanted to, and this will influence the results you get back. So the first argument is max underscore length equals 50. So this defines how long your output is going to be. In this case, I've set it to a limit of 50. Then I've passed all 50 words. Then the next keyword argument is do underscore sample equals true. So this is going to allow us to leverage sampling within our model. And then we've also gone and set our temperature to 0 0.9. So this influences uh, how it actually determines results going forward from a particular token that it's actually had returned back. So again, you can play around with these parameters, uh, tune them, play around, take a look at the documentation. Again, this tutorial is going to be super fast and so we're not going to delve into it too much. But on that note, let's go on ahead and run this line and generate our text. Okay, so that line of code is now run. Now the speed of which that actually generates is really dependent on your machine. So in my case, it took about 20, 30 seconds to generate a string with a max length of 50 words. But in this case, if you were to pass through a higher maximum length number, it will take longer. Now, what we can actually do is take a look at our results. So if I type in res down here, you can actually see that it's gone and generated this big block of text. So you can see that it's gone and says, what is the meaning of life? Why does it matter? Oh, it's not exactly that happy in the moment. Where do I go to find the meaning or at least some sort of explanation for what I'm experiencing here and now? I've been asking this a dozen times now. Now, if we actually go and pass this result, so if we grab the first result and type in dot generated text, this is actually going to give us our raw string. So you can see, and if we print this out, we'll get our string formatting. So you can see we've actually got our line spaces. So in this particular case, just by passing through this short prompt, we've gone and got this entire result out. Now, if we wanted to generate more text, we can just change the maximum length. So say I set it to 100, run that again we're going to get a longer string generated. So let's let that go on ahead and run, and then we'll ideally get a longer answer to what is the meaning of life. There you go. So it's now gone and generated a new block of text. So all we really did there is we changed the max length parameter. And in this particular case, it's gone and generated a bigger block of text. So what is the meaning of life? So it still starts out with that prompt. In a recent conversation with a friend, I heard him say, you must go through life with the attitude that you are never going to leave. I had to check on whether he actually said this to me or if it was in the form of a quote or something similar. I decided to find the original source of this quote after reading about it in a book on self-help. Quickly found a website. So in this case, it's writing a slightly different, uh, it's going down a completely different route. But again, this is just a random prompt. So say, for example, we wanted something a little bit more contextual aware. So I'm going to set our max length back to 50. And what if we said something about Bitcoin? So if we said Bitcoin is going to, and then run that particular prompt. So if we run that now, let's go and see what GPT Neo now generates. There you go. So it's now gone and generated a new text. So if you take a look, it's gone and written, Bitcoin is going to be the most important currency in 2020. The crypto market is on the rise and Bitcoin has gone from a joke in late 2016 to the world's favorite cryptocurrency in 2018. Well, it's not wrong. I mean, 2021 and it's super popular. There's been a massive rally in 2018 and 2019. And again, we've cut it off at 50, but you can see that it's actually generating some really, really interesting text results. Now you could use this to generate blog posts, maybe write a song, write a poem, so on and so forth. But my particular favorite thing is actually using it to write some code. Now I was testing this out earlier this week and I, I thought it was super fascinating. So instead of writing our prompt as text, what happens if we wrote one of the most common lines of code that I wrote? So import pandas, as PD and run that now. So let's go and see if it actually goes and generates some valid Python code. And there you go. So what it's actually gone and written is import pandas as PD, which was our original prompt, but then it's gone and passed through a bunch of additional imports. So from collections, import counter, import OS, import sys, import numpy as MP. So it's almost like it's importing some pretty standard uh, data science libraries. I mean, the fact that it's got numpy, it's got time, it's got NLTK down here. So you can see that it's actually really, really contextually aware uh, and it's able to generate a whole bunch of stuff. I'm probably going to be playing with this all weekend, but you can sort of see what's possible with GPT Neo. Now, if you wanted to go on ahead and export this text, you could do that really easily. So let's go on ahead and do that.
Okay, so before we go on ahead and run that, I just want to sort of show what I've written. So with open, and then to that, we've passed through the name of the file that we want to generate or output. So in this case, I've called it gpttext.txt. So you can see that there. And then we've passed through the W flag because we want to write it out. And then we specified as F. So this means that we're going to be able to work with our file as a variable called F. Then in order to write out our text, I've just written F dot write lines. And then I've passed through this text block here. So you, this text block is exactly the same as what we were printing out up here. Now we're just outputting it. So if we actually go and run that block of text, and if we take a look at the folder that we're working in, let me bring it up. You can see that we've now got this file called GPT text. If we zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So you can see that we've got GPT text there. And if we actually go and open that up, you can see that it's exported all of our Python code. So maybe you could write the, use this to write an entire data science workflow. Who knows where, what's possible and where you can take this to. And again, if you wanted to use a different prompt, so say, for example, we uh, wrote something about um, the current stock market, current stock market, and just run that. We could now go and export different blocks of text. So again, whatever you pass through in that prompt, this particular workflow is going to output that to a text file. So let's let that run and we'll take a look just to make sure that it's now outputting our new block of text. So there you go. So what we've now gone or what GPT is now gone and written. So is the current stock market is a unique market in that it incorporates some fundamental market characteristics, correct? Uh, together with market psychology, human judgment, and human biases, such as market timers, price momentum, and crowd psychology. The stock market is like any market for goods and services. And if we go and check out our file, so you can see that it's now gone and exported the text that we had exactly as we had inside of our notebook. Pretty cool, right? So this sort of shows you what's possible with GPT Neo in a nutshell. Now, again, all we did is we installed and imported our dependencies. So we went and installed PyTorch and Transformers. And then we wrote four lines of code to allow us to go and generate our new blocks of text using GPT Neo. So we wrote our import, our generator, our prompt, and then we actually went and ran our prompt. So again, really, really quickly, you're able to get up to speed with this. And then you're able to output this text. So you, again, you might take this further. You might use this to automatically post to a WordPress website, you could generate uh, different articles, you could generate blog posts, I don't know, research papers. There's a whole bunch of different use cases that are possible for GPT Neo. On that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know how you went with leveraging GPT Neo. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for tuning in, peace.